Welcome traders to this week's installment of my weekly uh, live market analysis. Uh, just give it another 20 seconds here before we get going. <clears throat> Okay, just before I get started, if you can hear me and you can see the Tickmill welcome screen, if you could just type a Y in the chat box so that I know uh, you, you've, got, uh, you've got a feed here loud and clear. Good stuff. Okay, so um, before we get started, obviously I want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. <clears throat> Most importantly, with respect to uh, today's discussion, the views and opinions expressed by uh, me today are, uh, are solely mine and they're not indicative of or representative of uh, Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. For those that are here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. My name is Patrick Manley and after I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and ultimately exit a consulting startup focused on C-suite executive search for technology startup businesses. Having a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, quite literally sometimes overnight, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets. With some capital to play with and some time on my hands, I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down, giving back all my gains and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my capital. And to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I had to really stand back and figure out if it was really feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of developing a strategy that uh, crucially suited my personality, uh, the back and forward testing the strategy, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game and probably the most important uh, watershed shift I made was from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process oriented. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But I can tell you once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns as well. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of traders of all experience levels from complete novices to former CME floor traders in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to uh, my fund management and mentoring. I'm also a resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill. My other passion project is uh, leading uh, trading education for a premier trading education brand called fxcareerswap.com. At FX Career Swap, we don't just offer uh, development and funding to retail trading talent. We, we really work uh, beyond just developing market and trading strategy knowledge on mindset development for a structured program that culminates in managing the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis. So that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. But just before we get started today, I would like to highlight a couple of uh, new Facebook groups that I am uh, delivering content to. Uh, the first here is the Trader Blueprint. I'm gonna put the link into the chat so that uh, you guys can follow up and, and join uh, these groups. 
Uh, this is a public group whereby I post uh, my, my daily analysis and some other interesting bits and pieces with respect to the markets. Uh, so you might want to, to take a look at that one. Uh, the other group that I run is for Tickmill and it's their futures group uh, whereby I um, deliver daily trade analysis for the S&P uh, 500. Uh, we've been doing, we've been running that group since uh, April 14th, middle of April, and we're up uh, over 270 points in the, uh, in the trades and analysis that I've provided. Um, so, take some, so take some time and, uh, and take a look at those in your own time. Uh, before we get started on the charts, I just want to uh, let you know that it, with respect to questions, if you have any questions, uh, please note them down as I go through the, uh, the presentation here, and I'll open up a, a brief Q&A at the end if there are any questions that, uh, that you'd like me to, uh, to respond to. So let's get started with the charts, and we're going to start with the equity <laughs> indexes. Here we have the S&P 500. Uh, what I'm looking for with the S&P now is either we're going to take out this uh, 42, 45 to the upside uh, without a pullback, and ultimately then I'm looking for a test of 43, 43, the ascending trend line resistance, and I think from there we could see uh, a more sustained correction. But certainly between uh, this this period now, uh, coming in next week, heading into uh, heading into the 21st of June, I, uh, I can see upside for these equity indexes. So even if we get a pullback today, tomorrow, <coughs> certainly pay attention to 41.45 on the downside. Bullish reversal patterns there to set those long positions, looking for uh, 43.70 on the upside. NASDAQ, uh, not quite as bullish the NASDAQ. I think uh, whilst we hold uh, 13,915, there's still the potential for another leg lower here uh, in the NASDAQ. So uh, if we do get down into this zone here, the ascending trend line support coming in at 12,980, uh, I'd be watching for bullish reversal patterns there as an opportunity on the long side. But at the moment, I prefer the, the setup in the S&P. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones here. <coughs> Similar story with the Dow Jones, a little bit weaker uh, than the, than the uh, S&P at the moment. But any move that comes into this uh, 34,000 level now, whereby we have the ascending trend line support coming in from uh, the March lows, the pandemic lows. Uh, watch for bullish reversal patterns here, uh, 34,000 to set long positions. And then I think we can take a run up to 36,000 before uh, seeing a more sustained correction. So ample opportunity to, to profit there, but uh, need to get the confirmation of bullish reversal uh, signals there at the 34,000 level. The DAX. <coughs> Looking, uh, looking for the DAX to test its uh, internal trend line support here at the uh, 15,350 level. Bullish reversal patterns there again, look for long positions. And I think the DAX gets a run up to test uh, 16,400 area before we see uh, another corrective phase develop. Uh, the VIX, obviously the volatility index, giving us a sense of fear in the markets or potential uh, fear in the markets. I'm looking for the VIX to actually uh, trade lower to ultimately get a test here of this 14 level. And then I think we could see the VIX uh, have uh, a, a spike to the upside, basically. And that would coincide with these equity indexes getting up into those new highs before, uh, before, what, uh, before we see a, uh, a pullback in terms, of, uh, in terms of the equity indexes. Dollar index, obviously under pressure. Um, looking for the dollar ultimately to get to break down here to, uh, to print a new low into this 88.70 area. And then I think from there we could see a corrective move in terms of the dollar index, certainly up into test the descending trend line resistance coming in there at, uh, at 90.80. US 10 year yields, obviously inflation, a uh, big deal at the moment. And um, we're going to get uh, CPI print coming out. Uh, shortly in, in an hour and a half, an hour, sorry. Um, and I'd anticipate that, you know, that's going to run hot. Uh, but I don't think at this stage that the Fed are too concerned about that as their focus is on employment and they've given themselves some cover in terms of the, uh, the two relatively weak employment prints we've seen. So I'd look for the 10-year uh, the yield to test this equality objective, 142.50, um, before we can potentially put in the next leg to the upside 
to see a move up to test 2% zone. Uh, gold, looking for gold to, uh, to either break the 1905 here or get a pullback into the 1838 level, which would be a retest of this descending trend line uh, resistance, then act as support before setting up for this move to, uh, to see a run up to test 1960 in terms of gold. Silver, <coughs> looking for silver to take out this descending trend line here. So I'd like to be long silver through 2860 and looking for a move up there to test 3168 as the upside objective for that, uh, for that trade. Crude oil, <coughs> looking for crude to trade into this resistance zone, 7180 to 7285. And then I think we can see a pullback into support at the $65 level before we set up for the next leg to the upside, whereby we should ultimately be challenging the $80 level in terms of crude oil. Copper, has a nice setup developing here. We have uh, an ABC equality objective coming in at uh, 42.50. So we'd like to see bullish reversal patterns there to set long positions, ultimately getting a run up then to the uh, 5,000 level in terms of copper. Bitcoin obviously been under pressure, still hasn't tested the, uh, the confluent resistance zone here, 4198, uh, 41,000. 915 to 44,000. I still like uh, I still like Bitcoin for a test of the the 20,000 level before I think we see any sustained move uh, to the upside in terms of Bitcoin. There, the dollar yuan <coughs> held the support zone that I highlighted, looking for it to break now through the monthly pivot here at 640.50 to get a run up there to test the 650 level. So waiting for that confirmation, I'm gonna see a close through the 640.92 level to uh, see the next leg of upside in terms of the dollar yuan. Dollar yen, <coughs> hugging this trend line. So what I'd be looking for is a close through 109.15, which would give a, a nice opportunity, I think on the short side, to get a move back to certainly test support at the 107.50 level and potentially an equality objective versus this swing structure here, which would see us back down into 106.80 as the primary target for that move. Dollar Swiss, uh, it's got someone coming through in the Q&A here. Uh, if you keep the questions to the end, then like I say, I'll answer them at the end. <coughs> um, Dollar Swiss, potentially carving out an inverse head and shoulders scenario here but uh, certainly we need to see price back through the uh, 9050 level to, uh, to see further upside to ultimately to retest the monthly, uh, sorry, the yearly pivot from below at 9180. And then maybe we might have a more meaningful bottom in place here in terms of the dollar Swiss. Looney remains, uh, remains under pressure here, but I can, we can see we're, we're trying to carve out a, a base here at the 120 level. Any move back into 123.70 with bearish reversal patterns should set up another leg to the downside. Certainly think about 118 and maybe uh, as deep as 116.80 before a more, more meaningful correction uh, develops. Uh, the Euro, <coughs> under a bit of pressure here. We just had the ECB come out. They, uh, we've got Lagarde's press conference coming up uh, shortly and uh, we'll see if she addresses uh, the, the potential for talking about or thinking about talking about easing uh, or sorry reducing monetary uh, easing uh, but for now whilst we hold this 122.20 uh, we could see a pullback here in the euro to test the 119.70 as support but equally if we uh, if we take out this let me just draw it in here for you we've got this little trend line potential flag scenario so um, any move through the top side of this flag will see us trade directly up to uh, the monthly range resistance, 123.80. And then I think we'd see the momentum divergence kick in. And then we probably see a, a more sustained correction from those levels, getting back into the trend line support at that 119.90 area. Uh, keep an eye on the momentum divergence here, which, uh, which is starting to weigh on the euro a bit. Euro yen, uh, 
Uh, I like this on the short side through uh, 132.80, and I think we get a run down to 130.80 as the uh, as the downside objective there before we set the next leg to the upside in terms of the euro yen, euro Swiss testing the support zone. So I'm watching now for bullish reversal patterns in the euro Swiss. So uh, and I'll be looking to set long positions initially targeting the trend line resistance 110.16 we can get th up through there then I think we've got a clear run back into the highs here at 111.50 so uh, keeping an eye on the euro swiss now we're watching for a bullish reversal pattern to uh, to get in on the long side euro sterling uh, looking for it to take out the 86.75 level uh, get a move up through there and again thinking uh, long positions targeting the equality objective 88 10 to 88.30 is the uh, is the upside objective for that. But like I say, need to take out this 86.75 level to uh, to encourage long positions there. Euro Aussie, I'm watching for the potential to get a pullback to test this trend line support 155.55. I think that then could uh, could prove an opportunity on the long side. Uh, certainly thinking about a test up here into this prior support zone where we broke down uh, looking at 160, 161 uh, in terms of the Euro Aussie, but uh, that's one that's just on the radar at the moment, nothing immediately setting up. <coughs> Euro CAD, uh, looking for another leg lower to test into uh, monthly range support here at 145. And then I'd be looking at that one on the long side as well as we'll have significant uh, momentum divergence to key off there. Uh, if that, uh, if that plays out. <coughs> Euro Kiwi, um, seeing the potential for another move to test the trend line support here before we, uh, before we can potentially get a run up into uh, this uh, trend line resistance at the 172 level. So nothing really to do there as such at the moment. Sterling, uh, looking for long positions in sterling, if we can get a move into this trend line support and get a bullish reversal pattern, I think that sets up uh, nicely on the long side then to get this final leg uh, up into the 144, uh, 144.50, uh, 145 resistance zone. And then I think we could uh, think about another, uh, a more significant correction, but certainly watching for bullish reversal patterns here to, uh, to look to be uh, to be long sterling, sterling yen. <coughs> I think we've uh, we probably get another leg to the upside here to complete this pattern in terms of sterling yen, and then I would be looking on the short side. So when you move back up into the one fifty six to one fifty six sixty area, watch for bearish reversal patterns there to uh, to get in on the short side in terms of uh, sterling yen. The Aussie. Uh, nothing doing here at the moment. We're in very tight range and uh, no clear setup. Uh, certainly, the, it, at the moment, the, uh, the bias appears to be shifting to the downside here. We've got uh, the psych indicator printing bearish and we've got uh, the VWAP candles also printing bearish. We can't get a close through the monthly pivot at uh, 77.66. So whilst we hold there, a break of the 76.30 area uh, would be interesting on the short side, targeting the equality objective at 74.19 on the downside. That's versus this swing structure here. Looking for that pattern to complete. Aussie yen. <coughs> Nothing to do in this one at the moment either. Let's take a look at the Aussie Swiss. This one I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking to get long the Aussie Swiss. I did, uh, I had a position on earlier in the week that got stopped out, but I'm still looking at this area. We've got the 38.2% retracement of the last leg to the upside. We completed the equality objective here. So um, 69, 16 area, whilst we hold there and watching for bullish reversal patterns and I'll go back in uh, to that on the long side and certainly thinking about a test of descending trend line resistance at the 71.30 area as the upside objective for that move. Aussie CAD, got an order in play here to, uh, to go long the Aussie CAD through the 93.95 area. And I'm looking for a test of descending trend line resistance at 95.50. Uh, hasn't been triggered yet, but uh, bullish reversal uh, from this support zone 
which is the equality objective versus this swing here. So the ABC uh, 92.58. We're also sitting just above the yearly pivot and this, uh, this prior support zone here, 92.50. So watching for a break through that 90, uh, 3.95 to get long the Aussie CAD and uh, target, initially targeting the 95.50. Kiwi, uh, similar to the Aussie really, going nowhere fast. We did take out this trend line, uh, but we have seen very little follow through. And that's principally being driven by the low volatility environment we're in at the moment. So uh, it's making, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to get these, these moves to get going without some follow through. And we're not seeing that yet. I'd be looking for a break of the 7090 level uh, to encourage the potential to see an acceleration to the downside. And then the target then would be 67.99. But for now, we're in no man's land. Uh, we've had this range 73 to 71.50. And we've been in it for the past couple of months and it's just dinging around in there. So no real edge there at the moment. <clears throat> also, Yen trying to hold this internal trend line support. If we can get a bullish reversal pattern here in terms of the Aussie Yen, if we think in terms of risk sentiment in the equity markets moving higher, then I think there's an opportunity on the long side in the Aussie Yen. I want to get back through the monthly pivot at 79.20 before uh, moving into long positions. And then we could be targeting a move up to 80.73 and 81, the monthly range resistance in extension. Kiwi Swiss, uh, Again, holding this um, trend line support now, Kiwi Swiss, and I'm watching for a bullish reverse pattern. If we can get back through uh, 64.70, and I like this on the long side to, uh, to retest the prior highs at 67.66. So keeping an eye on this, uh, this Kiwi Swiss whilst we hold above the trend line support here at 64.20. Swiss Yen, like this on the short side, if we hold this double top here, looks like we're going to, to make an attempt to test it, uh, move back through uh, the support here at 121.40, I think is a nice opportunity on the short side to play for a correction. CAD yen, another one I've been watching, haven't, haven't had a signal yet, uh, might be setting up now to, uh, to take another look at the upside here. Uh, before potentially reversing. So keeping an eye on the CAD yen, but no signal as such just yet. Um, this is the other trade I'm in at the moment, the CAD Swiss. Uh, posted this as a, a, a chart it through, uh, through Tickmill. Uh, got that bearish reversal pattern cut, um, with the bearish psych as shown down here. And we, uh, we rolled over, we're stalling a bit now, but ultimately I'm looking initially for a move to test 73.55, if we can get through there, then we can start to think about 72.50 as the downside objective. Um, last but not least, the E-mini S&P. Uh, looking bullish here, I'm looking for a break through, uh, through uh, 42.45 to target 43.50 on the upside. Uh, if we don't get a breakout, then I'm looking at any pullback into the support here at 41.78. Again, uh, bullish reversal patterns here, set long positions. I think we, uh, we can get a run up to 43.50s heading into the uh, June 21st time window is, uh, is what I'm targeting. So that, uh, that concludes the, uh, the charts that I'm watching at the moment. Certainly I'm paying attention to the equity indexes, uh, the metals, um, in terms of uh, the FX side of things, I'm watching this Aussie Swiss, the Aussie CAD, all, uh, all trades that I'm paying attention to. And like I say, I'm holding the CAD Swiss. And there are a couple of others on the radar there that I've mentioned that I'm going to be keeping, a, keeping an eye on. I'll be updating uh, through the uh, chart hits through Tickmill. Are there any questions? Uh, Want to know what is the prediction later for CPI? Uh, I'm... <laughs> Uh, the predict well the prediction <laughs> I don't I don't personally make predictions but um, I'm looking for a, a, a hot print but like I say I think the market looks through it because the Fed have already indicated that they're not going to be driven by the short-term spikes in inflation which they believe are transitory and so are they right that it's transitory well I don't know um, and nobody knows is the is the actual truth but at the moment, um, the market uh, believes that, uh, you know, that that's going to be looked through and we're not going to see any taper talk into the June meeting, which is next week, because um, the jobs data isn't supporting uh, the inflation data. So until they return, until the, the jobs 
<coughs> the employment situation uh, returns to uh, pre-pandemic levels, then the Fed are going to keep an easy monetary policy in place. And so I really, I, I think the earliest uh, we're going to see any potential talk, uh, certainly from the Fed chair, Powell, who's the most important member of the committee, um, is probably the Jackson Hole end of August. Uh, we've just seen the ECB come out um, with, uh, they're, they're increasing their pet program, so they're keeping a large degree of monetary easing in place. And so I don't think these major central banks, the ECB or, um, or the, uh, the Fed, are going to want to make a move just yet in terms of policy. So these, these, uh, these data points, like the CPI, for example, they may cause a bit of short-term volatility, but they're not going to dramatically uh, impact the overall narrative in the markets at the moment. Any other questions? You can type it into the chat box. Or if you've got a microphone, I'm happy to you can unmute your mic. Equally, if you don't have a question, typing an N in the chat box is helpful so that I know we can uh, we can wrap this session up and, uh, and can start listening to Madame Lagarde at the ECB. OK. Thanks very much for your time, everyone. Uh, uh, Derek, uh, Euro Sterling, yep. Yeah. So the Euro Sterling, Derek, what I'm looking for is if we can get back through 86.75, I like to be long Euro Sterling, looking for 88, uh, 88.09 to 88.30 as the upside objective. Okay, everyone, I'm going to wrap this one up here. I uh, hope you have a great rest of the week and weekend, and I'll catch you all the same time, uh, same place next week. And like I say, check out the, uh, the Facebook groups. I've put the link in the, in the chat. And, uh, and if not, I'll see you all at the same time next week. Thanks very much, everyone.